The day the president of the United States collapsed and face planted in front of the world, the home pages of MSNBC, CBS News, Washington Post, Los Angeles Times, and the New York Times did not mention it. Look at this screenshot. The New York Times found space above the fold to report how three feet is now acceptable CDC coronavirus guidelines for children. But no space for the three feet President Biden fell through the air directly onto his face. Our American press are thrilled when American jobs get outsourced to foreigners. Now it seems they're outsourcing their own. Look at this screenshot of how the American press covered this debacle and how the British press covered it. Astounding. We truly do live in a George Orwell reality. Total disinformation. We sound like a broken record here and it deserves to be said. The only function of the American corporate press is to protect the Democratic Party and crush any narratives that may hurt their masters. But surely those in our comedic class will have the bravery to make fun of clearly the saddest, most mediocre man to become president in a generation. It's so easy to make fun of Joe Biden, it's almost unfair. The last honest, brave comedian in American culture, Robin Williams, had a field day with Joe Biden nearly a decade ago. Check this out. Oh, we still have comedy, though. We still have great comedy out there. There's always rambling Joe Biden. What the <laughs> Joe says that even people with Tourette's go, no. <laughs> no. What is going on? Joe is like your uncle who's on a new drug and hasn't got the dosage right. I'm proud to work with Barack America. He's not a superhero, you idiot. Come here. When FDR was on television, there was no TV back then. Come here, Joe. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> These are, this is comedy gold from a decade ago that Joe Biden provided. How good would Williams' material be today? So where is the cutting Joe Biden comedy? You just had a president fall down the Air Force One stairs, Saturday Night Live. This is, a, this, this is an alert, okay? Saturday Night Live writers, a president fell down the Air Force One stairs. This is comedy gold. Remember just a couple decades ago? Anything? Nothing? Of course not. Comedians today want jobs and Netflix specials and good press. So they shut up and do as their masters tell them to do. And the number one rule for these Muppets is to never make fun of your rulers, the corporate Democrats. But it's not the rule on this show. Here we ridicule because we must. It's an American tradition and our leaders need it now more than ever. So I took to the streets this week to ask regular Americans to take the Biden three-step challenge. Watch. This guy is about to execute a perfect Biden challenge. One, two, three. This is your family? Can we do a family Biden challenge? All right, can we do it all together? On one, two, three. Wow. The bra a family. Such bravery, guys. Such bravery. It was actually a really great clip. You can check out the whole video at Turning Point USA. The true press in America and the real truth tellers in this embarrassing political landscape that we live in right now are independent online creators. Meme lords are the political cartoonists of our day, and we celebrate them on this show. They are the last honest people in our modern political dialogue. Without further ado, this is the best Biden falling memes. Why did you cancel us, Joe? Why? Why would you cancel us? New modifications have been made on Joe Force One. No. No, Donald, don't do it. Oh, those are just sour grapes, don't. Oh no, what a drive though. What accuracy. You could be in the PGA Tour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. It's important not to lose your sense of humor. We here on The Benny Report have stressed the importance of satire in the last line as the last line of defense in holding our ruling class accountable. But not everyone is laughing and not everyone gets the joke. Often the targets of political ridicule live in such a protected cotton candy cocoon that they cannot handle the criticism. We've reached a point where the corporate media have become so broken that lines of parody and reality have become completely blurred. You dare mock the corporate Democratic elite, you will be punished. This past week, the New York Times falsely labeled and libeled popular, hilarious satire publication, The Babylon Bee. They called them a far-right information, misinformation site, sorry, and said the Bee traffics in misinformation under the guise of satire. That's an exact quote. 
These are the types of headlines the New York Times considers misinformation. Biden visits southern border to play despacito for migrant kids in cages. Hysterical. Mexico installs stairs to keep Joe Biden out. Very funny. Hurt all the feelings, though, at the New York Times. Joining us now to talk about this attack on satire and political humor, the CEO of the Babylon Bee, Seth Dillon. Seth, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Benny. Seth, how did you get away? How did you get away with being a satire site for so long? I mean, you'd think that you wouldn't be able to hide in, in plain sight being a humor you know, site on the internet. It's a great disguise, putting on satire as a mask. Uh, you know, who would have thought it would work so well? We can deceive the masses this way. Uh, look, Benny, this thing is totally absurd. I mean, the New York Times is be clowning themselves right now with this, with these like crazy allegations. I mean, we are, it's so clear when you go to our website, you look at it, we're a satire site. We've been around a long time doing satire from day one. So it's it's pretty inexcusable for them to, not even just suggest, it would be wrong if they just suggested that uh, there's a question whether we're satire. They actually flat out defamed us by saying that we're not satire. We're pretending to be satire. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, the Babylon Bee is one of my favorite sites on the internet. I believe many of our viewers probably love your content so very much. Are you considering legal action? Because what, they, what this seems to be is a direct attack on your existence, trying to get you kicked off of social media so that our viewers, myself included, uh, fans of the Babylon Bee wouldn't be able to get your content. Yeah, well, we have to take it seriously. We're, we're talking with legal counsel about what our options are and what we should do. And, and you know, ordinarily, I would just say with something like this, OK, maybe they made a mistake and maybe we can correct this by bringing some attention to it. The problem is that this is a recurring problem. The liberal media keeps bringing this stuff up over and over again, where, you know, Snopes is, is trying to say that we're uh, uh, deceiving people on purpose. CNN personalities are saying that. New York Times is now, this is multiple times, the New York Times has said something like this. Um, so what they're trying to do is get this narrative to stick, where they paint us as a source of dangerous disinformation so they can have us deplatformed. Right. Um, it, it's extremely irresponsible. It's inexcusable. And we can't let these lies stand because these are considered reliable sources. Like it or not, New York Times is considered a reliable source. Right. Next thing you know, our Wikipedia page is going to say that we're not a real satire site. We, we dabble in misinformation. We're trying to deceive people. That's right. So what do you say about the entire attack on comedy in the first place? It seems to be the attack is on the effective tools that the right now owns, memes and comedy, and they are perpetually going after those forms of communication because the left can't meme and the left is no longer funny. The Babylon Bee is both of those things. They can't. You know, we're aiming at the wrong targets. That's one thing. They don't like the targets we're aiming at. Um, but there's a, there's a bunch of different ways that they're attacking comedy and satire. Some of them are unintentional. One of the unintentional ways is they're making reality so absurd and insane, it's almost impossible to satirize. That's one thing they're doing. Um, but beyond that, you know, the censorship stuff where they're trying to actually mischaracterize us to silence us, I, to me, it's encouraging. It means we're doing the right thing. Obviously, uh, we're, we're over the target, right? This is the response that you have when, when you're afraid of, of whoever's coming after you. So I think that they see that our attacks are very effective. Um, the ridicule that, that satire uses, the irony, the humor, the mockery is extremely effective. Uh, and the evidence of that is the response we're getting right now. There's nothing hollow, empty, powerful people hate more than being ridiculed and being made fun of. It's proven That's through true. despots and dictatorships all across the world. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.